Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX launches but didn't quite stick the landing this time, NASA awards space station supply contracts, Cub Crafters introduces ballistic recovery parachutes, Pratt & Whitney delivers the last F-117 engine to the Air Force. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 18th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We all watched the live feed anxiously on Sunday as SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 booster from Vandenberg Air Force Base to place the Jason 3 satellite into orbit. The successful launch of the satellite was the primary purpose of the mission, and the mission was accomplished. SpaceX also completed their own experimental landing of the primary booster on a barge located in the Pacific Ocean. While the booster aligned properly for the landing, it appears that one of the landing gear legs failed to lock into place. As a result, the booster failed to remain upright, though much of the booster seems to remain somewhat intact. We congratulate SpaceX for their successful satellite launch and for their dedication to experimenting with cutting-edge concepts. NASA has awarded three cargo contracts for the delivery of supplies to the International Space Station from 2019 through 2024. The agency unveiled its selection of Orbital ATK of Dulles, Virginia, Sierra Nevada Corporation of Sparks, Nevada, and SpaceX of Hawthorne, California as the contractors to provide the services. These commercial resupply services contracts are designed to obtain cargo delivery services to the space station, disposal of unneeded cargo, and the return of research samples and other cargo from the space station back to NASA. The contracts guarantee a minimum of six cargo resupply missions from each provider. The contracts also include funding ISS integration, flight support equipment, special tasks and studies, and NASA requirement changes. The previous contracts were based on tonnage carried by the missions rather than the number of missions. NASA said the indefinite delivery and indefinite quantity contract enables them to adjust as necessary for additional missions or contingencies so that they can provide the greatest benefits possible from the International Space Station. Light aircraft manufacturer Cub Crafters has announced new emergency parachute systems for the company's line of backcountry tailwheel airplanes. The system is developed in conjunction with BRS Aerospace. The BRS parachute systems are offered on Cub Crafters production Carbon Cub SS aircraft as well as the company's Carbon Cub FX Builder Assist model and their EX2 kit. Systems are also available for retrofit on Cub Crafters existing fleet of LSA and experimental aircraft. Three new BRS models are immediately available for these Cub Crafters airplanes. The new BRS systems require annual inspection, a parachute repack every six years, and a rocket refresh every 12 years. These services, as well as installation of retrofit systems on fleet aircraft, can be performed now at Cub Crafters Yakima, Washington facility and at select Cub Crafters authorized service centers in the near future. After the break, production of Pratt & Whitney F-117 engine ceases, but the legacy continues. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Pratt & Whitney will deliver the final production F-117 engine to the U.S. Air Force for its C-17 Globemaster III fleet later this month. Bennett Croswell, the president of Pratt & Whitney Military Engine, said, quote, This is a bittersweet occasion for those of us who have played a part in developing and delivering the F-117 engine to our customers over the years. The F-117 production engine program might be ending, but we look forward to working with our customers around the world to sustain their engines and to keep the C-17 fleet flying for decades to come. Pratt & Whitney's F-117 engine is a member of the company's PW2000 family of commercial engines, known for powering the Boeing 757. The F-117 engine first entered service in 1993 with more than 12 million hours of proven military service and 50 million hours in commercial use. 
Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. Mounting a radial engine on a Vans RV8 makes it the ultimate cool airplane. Watch this first flight video completely to the end to get an up close look at the plane. Search radial engine RV8 first flights on YouTube. After these messages, Congressman Pompeo holds an aviation town hall meeting. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Congressman Mike Pompeo hosted a special town hall meeting last week with general aviation leaders and members of Congress. Topics of discussion included certification and regulatory reform, next-gen implementation, and the implications of recent proposals to overhaul our nation's air traffic control system. If you're feeling litigious and used Uber for airport transportation from June 1, 2010 to November 20, 2015, you may be eligible to participate in a class action suit against the company. The suit alleges that Uber charged for airport fees that were not remitted to the airports. Two passengers who were aboard a U.S. Airways flight departing from Philadelphia on March 13, 2014, have filed a lawsuit against that airline and American Airlines, which acquired U.S. Airways last year. The suit claims that a rejected takeoff left them injured. Embraer delivered 33 commercial and 45 business jets during the fourth quarter of 2015. The company ended the full year with 101 commercial airliners delivered and 120 delivered to the executive aviation market. The year-end backlog has reached $22.5 billion. Bombardier and TAG Aeronautics have amicably elected to end their contractual agreements. For 40 years, TAG Aeronautics served as Bombardier's exclusive sales representative and distributor for new Challenger and Global Series aircraft in 21 Middle Eastern and North African countries. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The NBAA says the National Transportation Safety Board's 2016 Most Wanted Safety Improvements, announced on January 13th, are in step with the safety focus areas of NBAA Safety Committee. The NTSB said preventing loss of control in flight continues as the NTSB's primary general aviation safety improvement area in 2016. Disconnecting from deadly distractions was also once again included on the NTSB list. New to the NTSB list this year is expanding the use of recorders to enhance transportation safety. With the growing use of data as part of aviation safety programs, recorders play a critical role in helping operators to validate processes and identify trends before problems occur. The NBAA's Mark Larson said, quote, The majority of the NTSB's most wanted safety improvements for 2016 parallel a number of NBAA's top safety focus areas. A continued focus on these items will contribute to improved safety, so we encourage all business aviators to consider what these issues mean to your flying. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. 
Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.